Welcome to Crafty Brewers Tales Behind Craft Beer. You may notice that things look a little different on this episode. That's because this episode is going to be a little bit different. But rest assured, it is still going to enhance your enjoyment of craft beer and your appreciation for the people who make this beer. Uh, we're going to go behind the scenes with... The woman who sits beside me on every episode, uh, I am beer drinker and hellraiser Brian Noonan. Behind the camera is our man, the executive producer, Cody Goff. She is the high priestess of hops, the femme fatale of fermentation science. She is the, oh, what else are you? You are the, uh, the, the, the something, yeah, the baroness of beer, and uh, you're, you're all, and the matriarch of malts. That's what you are. But the main thing that you are is the chief everything officer and co-owner of Exit Strategy Brewing Company. You are Catherine Vallow. It is good to uh, good to be here. It is um, it's okay. going to be an odd episode. It's going to be real weird. It's going to be real weird. But I think it's also going to be very very valuable on a number of levels. Yes, and it's um, it. We'll start it with our beer myth for today, which I think once you bust it, sets the table for why we're here right. why, why we have stools and up, up and right and red cups and all that right so, um before yes. we get into our beer myth we're gonna i first was thinking about addressing the very large elephant in the room which is the bags under my eyes and why i know we're all thinking about never, it everybody was thinking it everyone thought it cody like, texted me about it why does she look like she's got a full set of luggage under her eyes <laughs> I didn't why notice. does she look so tired that is what I have been thinking. Okay. And I know, I mean, again, let's just call it out now. Super, super tired. <laughs> All right? right. So we're going to, we just need to, we need to address okay. it. We've addressed and, why so, you look like a teenager. Why do you look like a drowned true. rat? So now we're going to say, so why do you look are like we a zombie? setting that up as not an excuse, but a, um, a basis for some comments that may come down the line? Sure. Fatigue? Sure. Okay. We good. can have, yeah. Well, fatigue. Yes. All right. Sure. So here's the beer myth. And uh, it's from, you know, I'm sure a lot of us who are not in the beer industry, who just like to go into breweries and tap rooms, we think of the owners and we go, yeah, it's a business, it's hard, but they must be rolling in the dough, selling beer to all us thirsty yahoos, and they're just sitting back there on like keg thrones, counting their money. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one to bust. All right. There's a little Is it not true? No, good lord, oh. no. Um, it is it is a hundred percent not true. The the addendum to that beer myth is also that like not only do a lot of folks think that you're just like you got a dragon in your basement guarding a pile of money. Uh, there's another misconception that goes right along with it, which is that a life lived in in beer is like super easy, super fun, and all you do is drink all the time and all those things. Also not true. Um, yeah, so we can we can bust. So that all myth of those. that myth is that myth is a lie. That's an easy one to bust. It's an easy one to bust. And yeah. it kind of leads into why we look different. Why we look different. So we have red solo cups instead of our branded glassware. I am not even consuming alcohol uh, right now. I have chamomile tea. I'm chugging um, water, but I do have a water, beer. Right, like <laughs> it, it looks different because uh, yesterday was the last day of business at Exit Strategy Brewing Company. Uh, we have closed our tap room in Forest Park, and and we are, are moving on from the beer industry as producers. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean we are out of the industry entirely. We will still be active in the industry, but the tap room will cease to exist as it is. Um, and that was a decision that took what felt like a very long time, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it wasn't that long. It was just a very, it, were, it was a couple very frank and honest conversations about the state of the industry, the state of this business particularly, and the state of the world really, and you know, drilling it down and, and what it meant for us as human people who are deeply tied to this business. And it was, I saw your husband, Chris, yesterday, who we interviewed on one of the first episodes, maybe yeah. the first episode. Yeah. And, um, you know, I said, hey, I'm sorry about this. And he said, well, this was not a snap decision. No. We, this has been coming for a while. And he, 
as heartbroken as he seemed, he still seemed a little bit relieved. Yeah, and there's a weird, there's a weird feeling about. I've got very, very conflicting thoughts on the feeling of relief. But like, back to the decision part yes. of it. In August, so a while ago from when this is going to air, we kind of said, "All right, the industry itself, and not just us, the industry in Illinois is getting hit very hard." with closures, with a decrease in sale. Everyone is reporting soft business. I mean, probably not every single one, but like lots of soft business is being reported. Um, these are conversations we're having with our brewery friends, right? It's like I was going to say, I hear you, like after our brewers are done with their interviews and you're going to take their picture, I hear you ask some of them those questions and the answers are fairly consistent. They're all consistent, which a lot of us are keeping our heads above water uh, a lot of us are starting the water lines real creeping up there. And, and some of them are like, I'm swimming right now, but I don't know for how long. Uh, and it's the smaller the shop, the more you hear that. Um, so we, you know, in August said, I think that we could, we can, we can push to the end of 2023. And that was the first goal it was like, you know what? We will do that. And that is what we will do, which was sad in itself. Um, and then as we kind of got into the fall and we see global unrest and we see downturns in, in the beer industry, like continue and we see inflation and the economy go to shit and we see all these things that starts to affect sales and it starts to affect what, what we're doing. We're going, all right, I don't know if, I don't know if January is going to happen. Um, and so one of the things that you need in order to sell alcohol is a liquor license. What? And I, I've just been selling it out of my trunk. Right. It's just on the side of the road. Yeah. Stuff I make in the bathtub. Absolutely. Um, so you need, you need a, a variety of liquor licenses. And let me guess, being in Illinois, oh, they're yeah. very reasonable, right? They are not only super reasonable, they're not complicated at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, liquor licenses are so easy. Um, <laughs> Another one of these like weird things, like everything's so easy. It's not, nothing is easy. Um, so you need a variety of liquor licenses. Um, like two to three of them. Like depending probably on what, what state, you're doing. local. State, local. Then there's other, like we have addendums for serving because you've got wine and spirits. That's a different one. So like there's, there is not, and it's, so I, I'm not only are we talking about like, the ease, a term used loosely of thing in Illinois, P.S. ease is an antonym for what it is. Um, but Cook County is also pretty jacked oh. with how they structure their licenses and everything else. So when that renewal came up, it's a huge chunk of money. It's an enormous, like it's an enormous expense when you are already feeling a hit. Sure. Right? It's a large expense, especially again for small shops. And it was like, all right, well, that expires the 31st of October. What do we want to do? And it was like, all right, well, we've put what do you want to do on the table? So we're now going to sit in it and we're going to we're going to think about what we want to do. And can I ask, are the the licenses, they are, they're only good a year. Like they you can't get year. a six it's, month license. Right. So my first you question, because I, I, I'm not I saying you should. Do, I'm just don't, I don't know. No, 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 I don't do numbers or math or paperwork or anything <laughs> boring like that. I am not the left brain person in our relationship. That is Christopher. So I didn't know Andy's if there an was attorney. an option. <laughs> it, right. And he's like, he just knows more stuff than I do when it comes to things that are on paper. I know other things. Um, and I did, I said to him, I go, is there a way to do almost like a, like a month to month lease? Like, yeah. Can we, can we knock it down from the year? And he says, no, it's a year. It's a year long. Now, given most human people with a functional brain, mine is like Swiss cheese at this point. So whatever. Um, would be like, no, of course it's a year. Whatever, we ask. If you don't know, ask a question. Um, so it is not something where you can shrink it down and say, you know, you want half a year or you want just an extension. Right. Right? Because I was, that was the oh, other yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, like, like a few month extension. Like, right. Can I just extend this and chop that, yeah, you know, for two more months. multiple thousands of dollars down to something more manageable? And the answer is no, you cannot do that. Once Again, because it's a license. Um, not, it's not like you can extend your driver's license, so you can't extend your liquor license. No, but you can get the reason I ask. You can get city stickers 
for six months. Yes. So I was like, well, it, there are things that they do. That's I, sure. I, yeah. I was just yeah, wondering. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's not, that's not an option. It's not an option. So then it was, all right, well, if we renew and we still had the idea of like, it's going to be the end of the year. Just because, just with how sales are, and with how, with with just everything, the state of all of it. Do we want to, do we want to take that, you know, chunk from the clearly cauldron full of money that every yeah. brewer is sitting on, <laughs> guarded by the dragon, um, or do we not do that, and and we call it in October? And one of the things that we discussed, and one of the things I've passed on to everybody that's asked about this, is there's. There's a couple of different metaphors. The first is we are all pushing a boulder up the hill, right? Like that's just life. You're pushing something up a hill. You absolutely are. Everybody is. Your boulder might not be the same size. It might not weigh as much. And at the end of the day, you can let the boulder roll back on you and get real hurt. Right. Or you can step to the side and you can let the boulder roll down and you can keep grinding up the hill. Right? So... We chose to step to the side um, and we're going to let the boulder roll down and we're going to continue up the hill. Uh, the other thing that was really important to us in making this decision was if we were to push and the decision then was more forced oh. than we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be our terms, our timing and exit with grace and exit with dignity. And I think one of the things that we've done really well is communicate this process, we have been open and transparent about what the closing has been like. It is, I mean, it has destroyed me as a human being. Um, but I'd rather be transparent about that than be like, well, this is the thing that we're doing and this is why we're doing it and see you later. Yeah, you didn't put a sign up yesterday evening I sure after did not. close I and sure said, did not. we're gone. No, it was, you know? it, was a two and, it was two and a half weeks out, which we felt was a respectful amount of time especially for our super loyal base of regulars to get the time in that they needed. Sure. Um, and I feel like we gave them that. We gave them what they, what they needed to feel. And your, your social media posts made it clear. And you kept doing, you kept things regular up until you closed the doors. Yeah. Uh, there were still the food trucks. There were still the pop-ups. There food was still trucks, the soup, pop-ups, bingo, soup and night. bread. To yeah. Everything stayed. Everything was the same. Nothing in October changed except the last day. That was it. You've mentioned a couple times, and we'll get back to, to you and Exit and Chris specifically, but you've mentioned a number of times the changes in the industry sure. and the downturn in the yes. industry. Yeah. Um, for years, when Cody and I would talk to brewers on the radio, we kept saying, when are we going to hit too many breweries? But is that is that the issue, or are there other things that are playing into the industry going taking a downturn? Great question, buddy. Thank um, you. There are a number of things. The craft beer industry, especially in the Midwest, kind of did what the housing market did in the early 2000s, like when that bubble was big, bright, and shiny, and everybody bought, and then it burst. Right. And we all, like, bottomed out. Craft beer in the Midwest kind of did that same thing, right? It just, like... Grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. I mean, because I've said before on the show, there was a, a, a time where you couldn't spit in the city of Chicago without hitting a brewery. Oh, I know. Every Truly. Like, you turned the corner and they were like Starbucks's. Um, don't support corporate chains. Also, they're union busters. Go to a local coffee shop. Anyway. Um, sorry. All right, Norma Ray. Quick side note. <laughs> Proud union girl right here. Cody, um, go pour out our lattes. Those are not, they're, they're, there's none in the building. We don't have those. No outside drinks. I'm still technically here. But um, we did move furniture yesterday, just so you know. God <laughs> damn it! And I laughed the whole time we were doing it. Was it a chair? It was chairs. That's fine. Okay. A chair I can handle. A table I'll kill you. Oh, no. It was um, a chair. All right. So what are they? Anyway. What, anyway. So <laughs> there's a lot of things working against the craft beer industry right now. One of it is saturation. I mean, one of those things is saturation. We are highly saturated. Mm -hmm. Um... One of the other things that's happening is that we have very large global beer companies mm -hmm. that are snatching up tiny ones, right? right? And you maybe don't know that your local brewery was bought. It kind, you know, you don't know all the time that somebody bought somebody else or somebody acquired somebody else. And that just makes these conglomerates grow, right? right? So then they're operating with more capital. 
which allows you to stay. Um, that's part of it. The other thing is, and this was something that was talked about at the National Craft Beer Convention uh, that happened this past summer, was the division in market share in the beer industry and what that's doing to craft beer. So the general demographic for craft beer now is being split up and we are losing market share to legalized marijuana, which is great. You want to eat your weed? Do it. Enjoy. Right? Like, get down however you want to get down. The dirty hippies and the devil's cabbage. <laughs> devil's said it cabbage all the is time. like my favorite, favorite, favorite slang for weed. Um, it's just... I mean, God's oregano is another one I heard once. I was like, that's great. Um, so we're losing it to weed. Legalized weed because, I mean, you're not hungover. Right. You're not ingesting the calories. There's a million different things that people are saying is a benefit to that, right, as opposed to drinking. Uh, we are losing market share to seltzers and ready-to-drink cocktails. These are huge now. More, like more breweries than not actually have had to brew a seltzer mm -hmm. in order to keep market share in their space. And it's interesting that you're using your brewing equipment, getting a specialized filtration system to make the seltzer for the people to drink at your shop who are then not coming in to drink the beer that you make. And the beer is the thing that takes a little bit more skill. Seltzer is water and flavor, everyone. It's <laughs> water and flavor. That's it. That's what it is. It, that's it. So that's why you're coming to a brewery to drink a seltzer. I, Cody's dying because, like, it is true. It makes though. no sense. And li this, I, listen, people can at me. You know where to go. Crafty Brewers Pod no, at gmail.com. No, no. I'm going to ask this. No, 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 no. <laughs> Was that driven by the female portion of the demographic? Because, to be honest, when I saw seltzers start to be marketed and people oh, drinking initially, seltzer, the marketing was it so was gender specific. And my it daughter was loves the seltzer. Oh, boy. Give loves it. The you seltzers. know what? They have their place. I like my seltzer with a, a quick shot of gin. There you go. Because I'm a grown up. Um,. They have their place in the world, absolutely, but there was an enormous amount of marketing that was so gender specific that it really made it sound like every single like 21 to 68 year old was knocking back white claws. That no is, law with white claw. That's also a, a great way. Ain't no laws, baby. No, just um, do whatever we want. And it's it's interesting, and I don't know that it was driven that way, but I think it became this. This is a spinoff episode entirely about how alcohol is marketed to women yeah. and the fact that when we market alcohol to women, it's this whole like, it's lighter, it's less caloric. There's a lot of like real, pardon me, sorry mom, there's a lot of fucked up marketing when it comes to alcohol and women. And that's again, whole other, whole other conversation. But I do think that that started to drive some of the consumption patterns, right? So we've got weed, we've got seltzer, we've got ready to drink cocktails. Those are things that are pulling market share away from beer. The other thing that's pulling market share away is trendy sobriety, which is really interesting because you've got- Never tried it. Well, and this, okay. So again, this could be an entire separate episode. I have a lot of strong feelings on trendy sobriety. If you, if you are choosing a sober lifestyle, that's great. If you are choosing Sober October because your favorite TikToker said that that's what you should do, I don't understand it, right? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. If you're cutting back, cut back. If you're doing that for your health or you're doing that because you know you maybe have had too much, fantastic, wonderful. Do it for your health and do it for you. If you're doing these things because you want to use the hashtag, that's another thing that's super messed up. But that's a lot of, like, social media influence and, and people being so driven by what external sources are telling them to do. But it's a, it is a noticeable shift from like in, again, in market share. Um, we also learned at CBC, the craft brewers conference that our younger populations, these younger generations, the younger millennials and into Gen Z are not interested in drinking. They are interested, they're interested in, in some, like, a seltzer and some weed. And that's, and that's great. Again, like, sure, sure. That sounds wonderful. Like, save yourself some money, too, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's it, yeah. So that, does that mean that 
in order to well, in order to for a craft brewer to kind of stay above the waterline, like you yeah. were saying, yeah, that they have to, you know, you got into this because you make beer and you make good beer and right. people like that beer. Yeah. So do you only market to older people? Do you, like you said, do you do you try to do a seltzer or something else right. to to keep that in? It, it's you know, it's like a carpenter who goes, well, now they want me to do electricity and right. I don't do electricity so, i do carpentry i mean when it came to that decision on seltzer we said absolutely not because because no because we are a brewery yeah and and i refuse to give in to an identity crisis we are not we are a brewery and that is it and we make beer what we did choose to do instead was a hop water which is also super popular now but also something that's taking away actual beer consumption right. And is that what it sounds like? Just it's water exact, with hops? It's, um, there are different hop concentrates that you put into carbonated water. And it's really cool. Some of them have really interesting... You can like get these hop concentrates um, that have the notes of the hops. They're hop derivatives. But they're clear because you don't want murky water that feels gross. Um, <laughs> we don't live in Flint. No. Um, XOXO, Michigan. So yeah, that's how hop water is carbonated water with, with a hop compound in it. And they're very cool and they're super refreshing. And it's just another way that we're morphing the industry. And the reason I feel less... But there's less, no alcohol content. There's in no it. alcohol okay. content in it. So when we go to Fobab um, very soon, one of the things that you're going to see a lot of is hop water. And that's going to be in this NA lounge. So, uh, excuse my ignorance. Does it taste like beer then? Does no, it, it's, it's just... It it's, just tastes like water with a... It's hop. It's hop. It's literally happy water. Like um, tea? Like hop tea kind of? It is a happy LaCroix. Wait, do you have any? Yes. On tap? Brian could try one right now. Yes, I could. I can get you one to try. Do you also want to do that fun thing that you do where you like I can, I can do a fun, fun edit. I can do, do a fun, fun edit, edit with edit? fun music. All right. And we're back. Thanks for the break. I appreciate the extra beer. You are very welcome. And Brian is going to actually try. All right, try. so this is hop. What, what, what is in your hop water? So the hop that we've got in it, the concentrate name is Salvo. Uh, so it's Salvo, which presents with a little bit of orange. We also did a little bit of orange extract in there. So it's just, it's just refreshing. It is refreshing. I'm not a... I, I, well, you don't like hoppy don't, beers. No, 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 it's not the hops. It's I don't like carbonated water. Sure. Okay, then don't drink this. Well, it's, it, I, I'm trying it. Because no, I want to be. Trying it is great. Don't make it a habit. No, it's not. No, the hoppy, the hoppy. I. It depends. So it's this, case to case. We're literally closing because you don't like hop water. That's that. Well, if that's the case, your business plan was flawed. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> I mean, very flawed. Not, it was really. Wrote that thing ten years ago, and we were like, "Shit, Noonan's not drinking, not hop, drinking water. hop water. We're done. <laughs> we're Close done. the doors. Uh -huh. uh, so the so. There's a lot of reasons, a lot of downturns, yeah. and a lot of people in the industry. And you you guys are not the only brewery that has been going through this lately. There's been a... Uh, 26 in the state of Illinois so far. 26. Just in this year. Just in the year 2023. It is... Uh, that is madness. Yeah. And that should concern... It should concern everyone. Whether you drink and like beer or not, it should concern you that small businesses... And that's just one industry. It right. should concern every single person that is invested in their community that this is happening at this rate. And it's not all, I mean, not to downplay how hard the pandemic was right. on small businesses. Right. And um, you guys did everything you could to pivot during that with, and thankfully the state allowed you to sell beer to yeah. go, which yeah, was yeah. great. Yep. But at that point you had a kitchen and so you had to try to pivot that and and there was a lot so the the pandemic was hard but you've said since things were things were going all trending in the right direction and then the industry kind of yeah. took a dump they were trending in the right direction um we made it through the bulk of the pandemic because whether i mean now that we're out of it we're still not totally out of it economic wise sure. right um we didn't just bounce back. No, no. To February of 2020 when we were all like high on the hog. Um, that was when the 
the dragon was that guarding all the money. That is when I got my dragon. That's when I bought my That's dragon. That's when you bought that the That's when I bought my dragon was February of 2020. Oh, uh, impulse um, buys. I know. They kill I am you. the worst with that. <laughs> I bought that dragon like it was a pack of gum. Um, we never came back to that. Right. You know, and it's everything is everything changed and new normal is new normal and, and whatever. So where we're at now, you know, we were we pivoted. We did well. We did have the kitchen. One of the fallouts from the pandemic, because, well, we don't want to consider ourselves a covid casualty. Right. There are parts of it that are still related to that. And one of them in the decision to first close the kitchen um was the rising cost of food and then food supplies. Sure. So when you buy massive amounts of food at wholesale pricing, you are subject to a lot of things being out or stock fluctuating and whatnot. So when we couldn't get what we needed or we were paying ungodly amounts of money for cases of eggs, which you go through a lot, and butter and milk and like cauliflower, which is a scrap delicious vegetable that should cost you about a nickel because it's everywhere. When cauliflower sh like shot up at one point to being $10 a head, yeah. Wow. And a case of cauliflower is 12 heads of cauliflower. Wow. And everyone's like, $120 isn't that bad, Catherine. <laughs> it's cauliflower. Like, it is that bad. But when that it's, also, when it's, when it's cauliflower, that right? That also carried over to all the, the brewing supplies, right? Well, and it right? carried over into the price of aluminum cans for canning. It carried over into hops and grain and yeast. And these prices are rising and rising and rising. And it's hard then when you're, okay, so when your cost, and again, I'm not the left brain smart one of the relationship, but I do know this. When my cost of goods does this and my pricing does this, that's not great. No. My pricing has to do this to keep up with this. Sure. The thing is, you don't want to outprice your zip code. You don't want to outprice your community. You don't want to become inaccessible. Sure. Because then that feels like elitist and weird and not good. So we tried very hard to be super cognizant of not skyrocketing our prices. So at one point, we shifted our beers up by 25 total cents. What the kind of evil monster. conglomeration right. are you? Yeah. What kind of big box? Re yeah. So. Ugh. Oh, that horrors. was like an increment. And it was the first time we had changed prices in seven years. But we had to because grains and hops and malt and yeast and the extracts and everything else. I mean, there was one year where we said, all right, we don't know if we're going to be able to make one of our most favorite beloved beers, High Violet, which is the blackberry vanilla sour, because blackberry puree was somewhere around, it was like 200 and some odd dollars for like a gallon of puree. And we use organic wow. puree in our beers. So like Oof. when you're making and you need that gallon, is gonna, it's like a one to five, right? right so right. when you're making, you know, 30 barrels or you're making 15 barrels, you're looking at thousands of dollars in Blackberry. Jeez. Right. So these are the things to put it in perspective of like, when you go out and you're going to a brewery and you're like, oh, this is easy and so much fun. Like there's <laughs> so much associated with, did you just look at all of your red cups and figure out which one was mm -hmm. not hop water? Okay. No, cool. I had cool. a hop water cool. first. Then I wanted regular water. Sure. Sure. To just this cleanse, hop, cleanse hop water. Beer, sure. No, water. good job. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure yeah, that I'm you looking. didn't. Uh -huh. No, I took a, I, I intentionally took a sip of hot water again. Proud of you. Because the first, you never go with just the first taste. No, you that's why you don't ever take the first thing at any store. You always take the one behind. Because right. everybody's already looked at the first one. That's so right. The They've one touched behind. it. They've tainted yeah, it. No. Yeah. So everything has gone up. Everything's gone up. Everything um, is just weird. And uh. then it, the, you and Chris have the conversation. So what happens in the two weeks after you make the announcement? Because you came out, you told... You told us, and let's let's put this to rest right now. What happened with Exit is going to have no 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 change to this project at no. all. No, we talked here. The three of us talked after one of our episodes, and I let you guys know that this was happening. And the only thing that is going to change is the background. Is, yeah, that's it. That's it. 
So for everybody asking, I know you've been asked. I was asked yesterday yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, what's going to happen? Yeah. So nothing's happening. No. The, the only thing that's going to happen, like you said, is where we're going to be sitting. That's it. But that's, that's it. That's it. All right, so that's out of the way. Crafty Brewers tells behind craft beer, and I banged Yo, on the table for the emphasis. Table. <laughs> and if you don't like it, edit it out. Um, that this is staying. The personnel is staying. There's no change. I know. I was very concerned that I was going to get fired from the podcast because I couldn't provide the backdrop. Well, the only reason we were here was for free hop water, which Obviously, was a mistake on my business was, again, plan too. Right. Right. So very you know, bad there you thinking. Have it. All right. So you make the announcement. Yeah. Um, What's that like then? What are the so, what are the intervening two we weeks? We told people in stages. Um, there was the very close circle of friends that we told. Uh, we told. Um, we then told uh, our staff, and then we told the world. Um, I drafted the statement at like three o'clock in the morning, the day after we made the decision, um, and just kept reading it, and then editing it, and reading it, and editing it. So that when it came time to go public with it, all I had to do was copy paste. Right. And it still took me about an hour at my seat at the bar with my hands shaking, shaking. Um, Like I knew which picture, I knew all these things and I really wanted to control the communication and the optics on it and, and the messaging. And I just sat there and was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it because. Once it's done, it's done. That toothpaste is not going back in the right. tube, and it's out there. And every word had to be perfect, and every colon, and every period, and every dash, and everything had to be perfect about the statement. Um, because at the end of the day, I didn't want it to be a sad thing. I wanted it to be something that was gracious and thankful, and and like filled with gratitude for what the community has meant to us, and what having exit has meant to us. So. Whatever, hit post, and then like through my phone was like, no, I can't even look at it. And then that was stupid because it immediately blew up. And then it blew up for days and it kept blowing up. And the biggest question, and I guess one of the things that I maybe did, I don't know that I don't think it was wrong, um, was I didn't use the word close in oh. the statement. I used, um, I used words, I used pause. I used respite and I oh, used those reboot. All those are coming back. They they don't necessarily. We are pausing. We are pausing literally everything. Well, and we're just right. But a pause a pause gives it, the it, it illusion of imply, a, right. you're going to hit play again. Well, and we also hadn't come to any decisions right. at that point yeah. either. We had said, all right, maybe we can do a smaller shop. Okay. Maybe we can relocate this. If we were to find us, this is a huge space. It doesn't look like it. No, it's big. When you're yeah, like. On film, it doesn't always look like it. Even in person, sometimes it doesn't feel like it's that big. Well, I didn't know it it's went as far back huge. as it as far back. It's you know? big. And the loss of so when we had the kitchen, it was it was very nice to have that. It was also the source of every single sleepless night and every single frustration because operating a kitchen is I it is like, if you've not done it, you don't know and you never will. And don't ever besmirch anybody that bitches about owning a kitchen. Don't. It's so hard. It's so hard. So were people calling you out f or asking because of the verbiage of the message that it didn't say closed? What was? They were like, so wait, you're like, you'll be back in like three weeks? I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and there was a lot of, I amend, and I didn't amend the statement, um, but had lots of conversations with people and said, no, we are. We are closing. We are moving out of that space. That space has become too large for us to manage. Uh, and we also, we recognized, and it goes, uh, it just, I'm sorry, it goes back to the kitchen again. When we closed it, that was a, a big hit of revenue. It was an enormous savings. That, I mean, the savings part was great. And, sure. the, and this, the, that was like a layer of stress that was just off, which is great. Um, but... It also meant losing community support who only identified us as a restaurant. Oh. And we do not use the R word in this family because we are not a restaurant. Right. We are a brewery that happened to have food. We were not a restaurant that happened to make beer. It was always about the beer. And when we went back to those roots, we took a lot of shit for that. And 
it was it was challenging to know that we were being identified as something that we were not. So moving on from that, it just that was a tough hit. Um, and that's when the space became almost too big to handle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, and that's that's fine. That's fine. So it's, people were obviously pouring in. I know yesterday it was yeah. incredibly packed. Madness. I've been watching pictures. Madness. Um, from the last couple of weeks. Madness. Is there any part of you? And, yep. And listen, there let sure me, is. I will. I will say this for you because I know one how grateful you are for all the people who mm-hmm. were part of you know who were your customers over the years. Yeah. Whether they yep. were here every day yep. or a couple times a month. Yep. So I get that, and I don't think you need to do that. Plus. Um, I know how cognizant you are of not wanting to hurt people. Whereas no. I will say things that will hurt people because they deserve it. Sure, um, sure, sure. But, oh, I can do this one. Okay. I can do would this one. Would you like to take it? I would love to do this one. There you go. So <laughs> we anticipated what we lovingly have heard in the industry before. We anticipated the sympathy bump, okay. right? Okay where you get a bump in business because you're closing and everyone's like, oh my God, I got to go back one last time. And that's great. And we appreciate that. I couldn't, I mean, (laughs) we're going to have a great month because of the sympathy bump. But here's my thing. Where were you? Where were you after the big struggle of the pandemic? Where were you just on a week to week? It's great, it's great the number of new faces that we saw. Unbelievable, wonderful, thank you, truly, truly. But I even had regulars look at me and they go, well shit, if all these people were here at least once a month this whole time, maybe we wouldn't be here. I said, yeah, you're 100% right. Because I think there's something about people wanting to just see the shit show. I'm swearing a lot in this episode. That's I'm right. really sorry, everybody. I'm only actually only sorry apologize to my to your parents. Mom. I'm yeah, really no, just, I'm sorry. No. It's, um, it's, but it's a very raw episode. And that's And it's got to be very frustrating to, it is to frustrating be that way. Because it's, again, like, it's great. It's great to have these huge days. Yesterday, we were running like there was no tomorrow behind yeah, the bar. it was crazy. And every time, every time I GM Jess... She was like, she'd go take it, like, take a lap. Like people would like to hug you. You need to hug people. Do that. The minute I crossed over the magic threshold, I lost it. And then I had to like get it back together to get back to work. And that's, again, it was wonderful to be that busy. It was so nice to have so many people want to come out and say goodbye and, and do that for the past two weeks. But one of the things that kills me is like, all right, we sold out a merch within four days. I've had those sweatshirts for a year, a year. And they were gone in four days. And again, wonderful. It truly, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm not insensitive and I appreciate people and I try no, to be but they're, so they're, gracious. Uh, listen, you're also a human being and anybody in your position, because Chris said the same thing to me yesterday when we were having a little conversation. Yeah. Uh, and it would be hard not to, when you look around and go, and we've had a conversation before about how, yeah, like yeah, when you guys opened, yeah. you were the hip new place. And yeah. people were like, oh, we're going to come in and look at uh, the bartenders are all tattooed and there's right. young Ooh, people yeah, in wool hats. So and this is yeah. local beer made right here and it's right. so cool. And then, you know, everything else happens. And I get to, you know, with uh, to a certain extent, I understand people's consumer habits. You know, things sure. are money's tight for everybody, but but it's also like okay, if you really want to support something, you don't have to be here every day. You don't have to be here every week. You bring up such a great point. I was messaged by someone this morning that said, "I'm sorry that I had to learn this lesson with you, but I'm going to be a better regular at the places that I care about, and you taught me why that's important." So if there's something that we can take away from this collectively as a community if you like somewhere just put them on a rotation if it's every two weeks if it's once a month if it is once a week maybe it's once a week and it's only one beer and it isn't once every three months and six beers 
it levels out, right? Like we have to support the small businesses because the small businesses right now are the ones that are just, we're just getting decimated. Everybody is. There's not one single small business right now that can be like, you know what's awesome? This. Nobody's doing that. No. No. This well, is it's, too hard. It's very, um, it's very sad for, mm-hmm. uh, for the people who love coming to exit. It yeah. can't, I yeah. can't imagine what you and Chris are going through. The, it's got to be a roller coaster. But uh, even with all of this sadness and all of this turmoil, yeah. the good news is we can always count on people being shitty. God, we sure can. So would you like Woo! to share? I would love it. Uh, I should, I should. Bad customer behavior from the final weeks. From the final weeks exit. at Exit Strategy Brewing Company, our bad customer behavior is all about theft. We have had in our in our eight and a half years of existence, I can count on one hand with exactly one finger the number of things that have been stolen, and it was a hat. Okay. Somebody took a hat out of a display case, and then I put up a sign that said. There used to be a hat here. Don't be a dick. Don't steal. <laughs> right? We had a hat stolen once. Okay. That was it. In the past two weeks, the amount of theft that has happened here has been astronomical. Like glasses and it's things? It's a lot of glassware. So we've had probably 50% of our glassware inventory stolen. And what kills me with that is that on... The thief's mind, they are thinking, oh, well, they're closing. They don't need it anymore. Ha, 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 ha. I'm just going to put it in my pocket. If there is a chance that that business is going to reopen, guess what they need? Their inventory. Yeah, right? So, you know, should there ever be a tiny exit, guess what I got to buy all new of? Glassware? Glassware. I buy all new glassware now because... 50% 50% of my inventory was stolen. But there was one Well, there was one, one other thing, and then that... there was the big thing. Oh, okay. So then we had, we had a sign in the bathroom stolen. We had like a little poster from the bathroom stolen. What did that say? It just, it was um, a small print of the big exit poster. Oh, okay. And it was on the wall, and then it was ripped down from the wall. So there's like a chunk of drywall missing. So that's cool. Thank you for that. And then there's... The big one, Brian and Cody. So we didn't do it for the record. We can't. We're, we can't pan over to the mantle that is just to my left, right here. We have um, a very old mantle in the shop, and this mantle is—I mean, it is in—it's in the space, just permanently affixed. Uh, it is gorgeous. It is one of my favorite things that is here, if not the favorite thing of mine that is here. And for many, many years, it has had a sign that says, please don't touch the mantle, thanks, you're super cute. That sign has been on the mantle the whole time. Recently, I mean, and by recently, I mean probably four years ago, um, I had a a buddy do a photo shoot with me as Rosie the Riveter as part of a series of things he was doing. He was doing Rosie the fill in the blank. Okay. And it was all women entrepreneurs. So we had Rosie the scientist, Rosie the librarian, Rosie the ice cream maker, whatever. I was Rosie the brewer. Uh, and when that was finished, we got amazing shots and it was so cool. Like the red bandana and the white tank top and the overalls and like, it was great. When that was done, he gave me a framed picture of me as Rosie. So I'm standing mid stride and I've got a keg on my shoulder and, and it's, it's just, it's sick. It's one of my most favorite things in here. I love it. Um, and I don't love it in an egotistical way. I don't love it because anything weird, it's a cool shot. Yeah, it's really it's cool. It's in the brew house. It's with the branding. Like, it's just cool. Rosie has been on the mantle uh, for four years. Saturday evening, and we have deduced when this was because I have talked to many people. Saturday evening after 1030 p.m. Because Rosie was here last seen at 9 p.m. on Saturday night by me. And it was last seen by a large group that had a gathering at these very tables at 10.30. After 10.30 p.m., so between 10.30 and 11, because we closed at 11, 
in those 30 minutes, somebody walked out of here with Rosie. I came in yesterday, Sunday, the 29th of October, for our last day to set up. I got here at 9 a.m., nervous energy all over the place, like shaking like a leaf. When I open the shop, I start in the front corner and I work my way back, right? So I cut, drop my stuff, have my coffee, come up here, and I look, and the mantle is empty. Rosie is gone. And I immediately text Chris, Rosie is nowhere to be found. I can't find Rosie. And then I text my staff, who was not awake, but I text him anyway, and was like, did you guys take Rosie for safekeeping? Is it somewhere? I can't find it in the offices. It's not in the annex. It's not in the kitchen. I don't see it. It's not behind the bar. Where is, where is, the, where is it? it? It was stolen. Someone stole a picture of me, which feels so gross and so <laughs> creepy and just made every hair on my body went into like porcupine mode. Because I was like, somebody took me out of this building. And it, it just, it was, it was horrible. Posted on Instagram, um, po- like got the post out that like Rosie was stolen. And if you are the human being. POS. Human person. If you are the human being that decided that you needed Rosie, I need it back. It is not yours. It does not stay in your home. You do not get to use it for any weirdness. It is Mine. It is mine. Um, and it needs to come back here. And just so like has it has it returned? So proud to report Ooh. that after many shares of the story and many people putting the word out that Rosie was stolen, Rosie was returned between the hours of like four and six PM today. Congratulations. You know what? So to the human person, term used loosely, that stole from me, which nobody does, except in the week before I close, uh, thank you for bringing her back. Thank you for bringing Rosie home. Um, Because that one was a, that was a blow I wasn't expecting. I mean, I I lost it. I put that waterproof mascara to the test right away. Well, it's one of those things you can only... There's a limit to what everybody can take. And when you go that one step past that, a, that, that limit, that was too much. You, you that was too can't. much. That was too much. Well, I'm glad yeah. she's back. She's back. I'm uh I'm glad that we are still going to continue with this again. Yeah, we're not exits, going anywhere. Exit's status has nothing to do with Crafty Brewers Tales Behind Craft Beer status. So, um thank you for sharing this. I know it couldn't have been easy, but uh I think you were right when you said it was you, you always worked with transparency through your posts and everything going up to this, and I think it was important because we were getting asked yesterday. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so it's yeah. important, and it does – I hope people will take something from this, that it's – yeah, it can be a really fun business. Sure, absolutely. But There's, it is a yeah. business, and it is uh, run by human, be- human beings who try their, try their best, and sometimes – circumstances oh my god and it was it's just too much and it's usually circumstances outside of your walls right right? yeah please everyone just as a as a very quick aside and i know i've talked so much this episode please remember that there are human beings behind businesses and those human beings are the ones that like you said they are trying so hard but they also come equipped with the same feelings that you do right so when you hide behind your screen and say shit someone else is hurt by that So think before you type and remember that like there are people in the world that are trying so hard that give actual literal blood, sweat and tears. Someone said that like, oh, like literally. And I said, no, actually, I bled everywhere. I mean, I've knocked my I've almost concussed myself on a pole. Like people give their whole life to their business and it becomes such a part of them that it's like ripping your arm off with a spork. That's what I mean. It just. It hurts, and it hurts in in places you didn't even know it would hurt, and at times you didn't think it would hurt. So be kind and be regulars and and be driven by the businesses that are in your community, 
Do that. Do it now. And don't steal. All right, next week we will go back to Grain to Glass with another fantastic brewer. Uh, next week is the Full Bab episode. Is that right, Cody? Yeah, programming note next week. Programming uh, note. Normally we're bi weekly. Next week we have a special Full Bab episode. Woo! We will all be going to the Festival of Barrel Age Beer. Very exciting. Also, uh, we have recorded a couple episodes already with our friends at Flapjack Brewery and Art History Brewing. So those were recorded prior to all of this happening. Uh, so if, uh, if you tune in in a couple of weeks and things seem very normal, that is why. It's because we recorded them first. And but we, we have many more recordings in the next few weeks. Yeah. And they'll be here for a while and then they'll be somewhere else and figure it out. Yeah. Well, and as Cody said, Crafty Brewers, Tales Behind Craft Beer. For right now, we're still recording them at Exit Strategy Brewing Company in sure. Forest Park, Illinois. Cody Goff, executive, produces this whole shebang. He's won awards. That's why we hired him. Why not? Uh, if you want to go to our website, it's craftybrewerspod.com. What can you do there? Well, you can buy fancy merchandise like this. You can read our blogs. You can also contact us if you have a brewer that you'd like us to talk to, a story about bad customer behavior, or a beer man that you're wondering if it needs to be busted. You can do all of that at craftybrewerspod.com. You can also email us craftybrewerspod at gmail.com with those same requests and everything else. Uh, Catherine, what else should people do? You should also like, share, follow, subscribe on all of your favorite podcast platforms. We are on Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube. Uh, you should follow us uh, on Instagram, we are at crafty underscore brewers underscore pod. Um, you should give us so many stars. All of the stars that will fit into the sky, which is only five. But we would like all five of them. Uh, yeah, they should do that, Brian. All right. She's Catherine Vallow. He's Brian Noonan. Any final words? Don't steal. All right. Even I got that one. <laughs>